As we keep seeing those record-breaking early voting numbers, we are seeing them as well in Georgia and North Carolina, two states that are critical in deciding our next president. Well, tonight we're hearing from Dr. Jonathan Sarnoff with Limestone University. He'll be with us on election night for hours-long coverage right here in studio. But right now, he says turnout will be key for both campaigns in these swing states. Dr. Sarnoff, thank you so much for taking some time with us. We are now less than a week away from Election Day. You will be with us on Election Night. We're going to have a whole host of analysts. You're going to be one of them there with us in studio when it comes to Election Night with a lot of coverage. So now that we are in this final stretch, less than a week out from Election Day, what stands out most to you about these campaigns that they are now making these final pitches to voters? And really, um, what we're seeing is the candidates are only going to seven more or less to seven states. Now, we did see Trump step out and go to the Madison, Madison Square Garden. Uh, Kamala Harris will be on Tuesday in um, uh, giving a speech in Washington, D.C., kind of a closing statement. But really, as far as anything that stands out or surprising, nothing is. It's a coin flip election. Um, Nate Silver, who is an analyst and um, pollster, has said that um, you can't trust any poll. You can't trust anybody guts at this point. It's all about turnout. Who is going to turn out their voters to the polls? And particularly in those seven swing states that range from Pennsylvania to Michigan to Wisconsin and North Carolina to Georgia to Nevada and Arizona. Those are the seven. Those are the seven we'll be watching on election night. And of course, in our area, we'll be paying particular focus to North Carolina. When it comes to North Carolina... What do you think uh, the importance of that state is? We know you said it's one of those key states, but is it a must win for either candidate? I would say for Trump, it is definitely a must win, especially if Kamala Harris holds on to those blue wall states, uh, so-called in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Um, for Kamala Harris, North Carolina is more of a, it would be nice to have it. It's one of those states that have eluded Democrats since uh, they went for Obama very narrowly in 2008, gotten very, very close. Um, but I'm watching North Carolina closely. I'm very interested to see. We know that Kamala Harris is going to be running behind Josh Stein when it comes to Josh Stein running for governor against Mark Robinson. Um, I, I can pretty much say with a great deal of assuredness that it looks extremely likely like Mark Robinson is going to lose that gubernatorial race. But that doesn't mean that Kamala Harris is going to poll as well as uh, uh, do as well as Josh Stein is on election night. So I'm very curious to see how the gubernatorial race is shaping up with the presidential race, how far behind Kamala Harris is running. If she's running, if, if Stein is way ahead and Kamala Harris is pretty much running even with Stein or just a little bit behind, she may have good news for herself in North Carolina election night. If she's running way behind, it may be a nail biter or Trump might win. We're just going to have to see what happens on uh, election night. Right now, according to the Harris campaign, according to the, uh, the New York Times is reporting that she feels less sure about her chances in North Carolina than another state in our viewing area, and that is in Georgia. So, um, but again, it's all about turnout. We're just going to have to see what happens on election night. There's been a lot of early voting, obviously, in, in Georgia and, and North Carolina. But again, we won't know. We may not know for several days who, who wins either of those states. You talk about Georgia. You talk about North Carolina. It comes down to turnout. You mentioned the early voting. What does that advantage look like for either candidate when it comes to these early voting numbers? Because we are setting records in both those states, also here in South Carolina. Right. We are there. Are, there are records being set. I would say that um, if you're um, Donald Trump has been very the only word I can come up with is quixotic when it comes to early voting um, in 2020. He was very much against the idea of early voting. But now in bits and starts, he says, OK, it's OK. But then he says it's not. But we do see, for example, in some more early voting um, in Trump, red counties, rural counties in North Carolina, in Georgia. Um, we haven't seen maybe the blue turnout yet that maybe Kamala Harris in uh, was hoping for in North Carolina and Georgia. But I will say that this week is expected to be a big week as far as is expected to be. Notice I said is expected to be a big week as far as um, turnout among those those big blue areas 
in Georgia, being in Atlanta, being in Savannah area, um, and of course all the of the city, you know, the research triangle of Raleigh, and um, you know, of course Asheville, that area we know as we know in our viewing area has been hit by the hurricane, and so we do maybe see some early voting there that's been tempered. Um, so we're just going to have to see again um, on election night. We'll start seeing the the results coming in and um, seeing how much the early votes and the in person votes uh, on election day turn out to be. Got that election night right around the corner, just a couple days away now at this point. So we're excited for it. We're excited you'll be with us and you'll be here yes. for that election night coverage. Looking forward to it, Dr. Sonoff. Thank you so much. We'll see you in a few nights. We'll see you in a few nights. It's going to be a long night. <laughs>